Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. It is Monday morning, and that means it is time for Mission Monday. And how grateful we are yet once again just to be in the presence. To be in the presence of God again today, and we just thank him so much for being an incredible God that he is. Uh, uh, verse for the day comes from Roman 8, and that's going to be verse 31. And the verse reads, it says, then shall we say in response to these things, if God is for us, then who can be against us? You know, I was looking at that verse and I was just thinking about the goodness and, and how strong and incredible God is. But, you know, also saying that he is for us. And so as we look into that, I just wanted to have a moment today. Is what is it like to be in God's corner? So before we begin, of course, I thank you today for giving me the time. And most important is the time that 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 you give God. Um, so today, I just once again bow our heads in prayer. Lord, use me today. We thank you, Lord God, for your word. And we thank you, Lord God, for the people that joined me today. We ask, Lord God, that the word will go forth in the course, as you say, it will never, never return void. But let that be a receptive heart, Lord God, that will receive your word and know just a little bit more about how you and your son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and how he interact with us each and every day. We thank you today, Lord God, and we praise you and we honor you. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen, amen, amen. I was just, just thinking about it. This is, of course, incredible sports weekend and so many things going on. Football's everywhere. Basketball's gearing up. Everything's going on. And, you know, then it flashed one of those one of those moments when uh, one of the boxers, one of the boxing matches that you don't catch too often, but I was surfing the channels and came across one of those matches. And it always talks about where we are. And sometimes it seems like we're, in in the fight of our life and we're trying to do something we're just trying to make it but i would just say to you that you know once again if you're in the fight and sometimes like you're in a fight for your life but you know you just got to know that god is is in your corner now as christians we often see god as being on our side in which he is uh that he is in our corner in which he is and that in the ring of life, God is our trainer, you know, teaching us the fundamentals uh, that no matter what God is that is going on, that God is cheering us on. But in reality, God is in control and we are in, we are on his team. Now for some, you know what, those words seem like they're there. But for others, it just may be a game changer. And why? Because I can tell you, even for me, to most of my professional career, uh, it's always been one that we have been told and we have been led to believe that, that we are in control of our destiny. That God is not only a slice of our pie, uh, but we have been led to believe that we control how big or even how small of a slice that will be. How we control God and how we allow him in and how we allow him out. Almost like a light switch. We can turn them on and turn them off only when we need him. But the truth of the matter is, is that God is the pie. Let me say that to you again. That God is the pie in our lives or a slice of his pie. You know, he created us to be his children and, and, and as his children, he has told us in the word, in the Bible, he's told us that he has a plan for our lives. Yet to an extent, he has given us free will. Can you imagine? He has given us free will. And so the ability to make decisions, uh, to make choices as to how we want to live our lives. You know, and when it comes uh, to our future, you know, God is not limited by our circumstances. Uh, sometimes we tend to only see as far as our circumstances will allow us to see. But God, who is in control of the universe itself, 
is not limited by our circumstances, by our finances, by our education. He is not limited. Whenever he gets ready to move, he will move and he can change things in the blink of an eye. And belief in God as well as belief in yourself uh, is critically important. You know, if you have a dream for your life and, and, and you've got, so you've got to believe that it can happen uh, before it can actually do it. You know, we need to believe that God's plan for us uh, is filled with greatness. And I like that word. It's filled with greatness. Because sometimes we don't see ourselves in a position to be great. Well, God's plan for us has to be filled with greatness for us. We just to believe and trust in him. Because the reason why? Because in him, all things are possible. There's nothing that he can't do for those who believe in him. And so we hold on to that. So I just, just tell you, you know, don't stop believing in God. Never quit believing in God. And never quit in yourself as well. You know, in him, uh, we can accomplish great things. And that's what he designed for us. That's what he wants us to do. It's part of his plan for us. And what that means is that in life, we know that whenever we're trying to get ahead, whenever we're moving forward, that sometimes we're going to have challenges. And challenges are going to come our way in life. But God tells us, just as he told Joshua, that we need to be strong and courageous and not give up, not surrender, but stand strong. Because God has said, I'm with you and I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So don't, don't be afraid. Just believe. Mark tells us that. He says, just, just believe. Don't be afraid. You know, and we must let our not let our fears, you know, get ahead of us, get the best of us. You know, we rely on the facts. And the one true fact is that God loves us and he wants us to do well. As a matter of fact, he even sent Jesus, his only begotten son, to us part of the reasons was salvation but more of the, so the, the other part was that we would have life an abundant life in him so we must move past you know what is holding us back you know uh and, and then because there is something and once we begin to break through once we begin to make that change there is something that's a new beginning that builds and builds and deals and takes us on the next journey that is ahead of us so, you know, don't worry about anything. Instead, you know, pray about everything. Tell God that you need uh, what you need and then thank him for all that he has done and will do for you. You know, sometimes when we get down on our knees and we just go into prayer and all we're doing is just asking, asking, asking. But sometimes we need to just pause, get down on your knees and just give God thanks what he has already done from what he has already delivered you from from the storms that he's brought you through from the new job titles the new the new promotions from all the things that he's done for you and for your family there's just a great if you just sat down and just write down all the wonderful works and all the things that he's done in your life then you will be able to fill volumes and volumes and volumes so every once in a while when you get on your knees, when you go into your prayer closet, pause for a moment and just say, Lord, for the next five, for the next 10 minutes, all I want to do is honor you and praise you for being the God that you are, for all the incredible things that you've done in my life. You know, and, I, and another part too is that when you do that, then now you've got testimonies and people will see and know how good God is. You know, one person said, he says, that the way you the way you think, the way you speak, the way you act will either reflect fear in your life or faith. But you can't have both. Fear or faith, not both. And so, yeah, it's a challenge. It's, it, it, it's a challenge. We're human. It's a challenge. But when we stand firmly on God, when we stand firmly that, that we know that things will change, things will break for us, that God will deliver us and God will have us be successful in the things that he has for us. And so if you believe, then you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. 
Even Jesus said that to us, you know, if you ask in my name. So that's where we are. I mean, Matthew Chaza tells us that, and Matthew he tells us that too. So I say, so listen, every day, free will, we make choices. Go left, go right, pursue or not to pursue. Stand still at times. But what we want to do is just one choice is clear to us. It's just choose to keep praying. Keep hoping that God will do great things in our lives. Trust that God, you know, has our as our Heavenly Father, you know, that He wants the best for us. So trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him is what the bible says proverbs tells us that and he shall direct thy path you know god has a great blessing for you and just ahead you know you you'll, you'll find that he'll provide you know what you need you know it, it, just in the manner that well, sometimes it's astonish you just how good and how great god is i know i find it sometimes just just as he begins to unfold his plan of how he wants to use me to, to spread his word and pe to speak to the people, the doors that he opens sometimes are doors that I think would, would ever I would ever have opened for me. And so, yes, we're going to move forward. We're going to go ahead. We know that sometimes when we move forward in life, we're going to have those challenges, you know, but regardless of what the challenges may be that you face, you know, God says again, reminds us, be strong and courageous. He told Moses that he told Joshua that, you know, yeah, you're going to go into the promised land. Yes, you will. But, you know, when you get into the promised land, the giants are still going to be there. The, break, the, the great walls are still going to be there. But know that it's the, each step that you take, I order those steps. And so each step that you take, I've made provisions for you already because I'm already there waiting for you to arrive. It's all about how well and how strong your faith is and believe. And be strong in that and don't let anything go. So Lord, we ask you to continue to lead and guide us. Continue to order our steps in our life. We know that you're there. We know that you're with us. We know that you, God, can do all things, Lord God, and not allow us to make, hopefully not make too grave mistakes because sometimes free will is something that we have to catch ourselves with. But Lord, we ask you sometimes just to put the bumper guards on there so that we don't get too far out of bounds. But we thank you for that. We thank you for the challenges because challenges, according to James, challenges make us strong. They drive us to a place of perseverance. And I know that once we pursue, once we can continue to remain strong, remain strong in you, Lord God, that you will unfold, that you will reveal, that your plan will come to reality for us. We thank you today, and we love you so much for that today. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you yet once again for being the God that you are. We thank you, Lord God, for yet another Mission Monday for those who have come together just to hear just a moment of your word. We thank you for them, Lord God. I thank you for them. Father, you are an incredible God, and we love you for that. So today, remind us that we are a part of your plan, and as a part of your plan, we know that you will make all things well with us. We love you today, Lord God. And as always, continue to be with our leaders. Continue to grant them wisdom. Continue to be with Lord God with our healthcare folks that are out there, the doctors, the nurses, Lord God, the statisticians, the folks in the ERs, the healthcare givers who are in the in the senior citizen homes, Lord God, or in the private homes. Be with them, strengthen them, Lord God, as they go through the challenging times with those patients. And I know, Lord God, what that might be like. And Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for being with those who protect us. Be with the ones, our fire department, Lord God, our police department. Be with our military, Lord God. Every morning we turn on the news and we just hear all the things that are happening, Father. So today, Lord God, we ask you to be with them as well. Be with those that are on the call today, Lord God. Be with them and their families. Continue to lift them up. Continue to grant them your grace. And where there's a need for healing, Father, we ask you just move your healing power into their homes, to their families, be with their friends and their loved ones, Lord God, for there is a need 
far beyond the scope of what we see on this call today. And so, Lord God, of course, we ask you to be with those that are in need. Be the one that provides, Lord God. Be the one that gives them what they need, whether or not it's food, clothing, or housing. Be there and give them what they need, Lord God. We thank you for that. And Father, touch our heart, pierce our hearts, Lord God, that we, because with those who are in abundance, that we, Lord God, can do more to help those in need. So touch our hearts that we will be open to do that. We love you today, Lord God, and we thank you for being the incredible God to you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, amen, amen. So thank you, everyone. Again, it's Monday. It's a beautiful Monday out there. The temperature is rising yet once again. Not freezing anymore, but we thank you for that, Lord God, and we love you for today. So everyone go forth, have an incredible day, and do, do enjoy the time that we have with one another today. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray today. Amen, amen. Have a blessed week, everyone. And of course, you can always reach me. The information is going to come up on the screen for prayer for you. But we thank you and we love you. Amen.